Hello and welcome to the first installment of Bigfoot Encounters shared by viewers. When I looked out the window this morning I thought this is the perfect day to start my series. Before we get started I want to let everyone know that I will not tolerate any mistreatment of the, the people that are sharing their experiences with me and with you in the comments or in any way so if you feel that you must leave a nasty comment towards the people sharing their experiences I want to let you know that your comment will be removed and you'll be blocked from commenting further on my channel at any time so if you're like me today grab a blanket wrap up and let's get started with our first experience. Our first encounter comes from a viewer named Bill and he writes, Hello, I live on 16 acres in central Michigan. My property backs up to a swamp and behind that is nobody for one mile and past that is wooded farmland. We border a stream to the north and woods are all around us although it is quite open in our front. Behind our house are small man-made ponds that run together. It is very beautiful here. The first thing that happened was we had our house slapped and when I went out to check, I found a 14 by seven inch footprint in pine needles close to where the slap occurred. Not too long after that, I had my first sighting. I had taken my old dog out at midnight and I heard walking in the leaves. It was bipedal. The dog never noticed and after I went back in, I looked out my dark bedroom window. I saw a tall, thin figure leap from one tree to another. I could see him when he moved because we have a light on a nearby shed. He was very agile. I had often heard them at midnight when I took the dog out. They would make whoops or owl noises. One of those nights my wife was with me and we heard a loud barred owl come from 20 yards away and behind some large evergreen trees. My wife said, that's a 300 pound owl. Then on the other side of our house came another owl call, then a third and a fourth from different locations by the swamp. One day we went away and came back after dark. In one of my sheds I raised rabbits and I left the door open. The trash can that I keep rabbit feed in was open and a large handprint was on the back of my car that was also in the shed. Last summer I was shooting my bow. I'm into archery and it was dusk. When my arrows hit my target they made a loud whack sound. From the south line, I heard a clear yep yep from two different positions. After I put my equipment away, I went back out. There was a dark shape by the corner of the rabbit shed. I think they watch us from that spot a lot. I stared at it and would take my eyes off it, then it turned and went back behind the shed. I saw a glint of dark hair in the faint shed light. I went in and looked out my bedroom window on the other side of my house and saw a dark figure walk into the woods. Later that night my wife and I heard loud owl calls as they walked our south line and then a tree break. All this was in one night. Another night my wife came home after dark. I forgot to leave the light on for her. As she got out of the car she said out loud, Thanks for leaving the light on. And then she got an immediate response from the woods by the creek. Okay, something said in my voice. I was inside the house. Most of what I experience is stick structures. Some are small designs that could not happen by chance. And others are just two foot long sticks jabbed into the ground. When I cut a path back to my deer blind in late summer, I will find a dead tree pushed over the creek the next day. This has happened two years in a row. 
I have had lots of things happen, but that's enough for now. It is ongoing. Well, one more. After Christmas this year, we had warm weather and no snow. A few hours after dark, our security light on our garage went on. Our door is right there, and windows. I went out to check and I heard a panicked, high-pitched cry only 30 yards away. Wah! Wah! Then followed by deeper owl sounds. I assume it was a mom and a baby and the young one tried to sneak up to the window and got caught and was upset. I hope I did that wah wah sound right. <laughs> it was either that or wah wah. <laughs> Anyhow, you get the point. Thank you, Bill, for sharing that with us. Sounds like you and your wife have quite an interesting life going on up there with your big fits. So you did say it's ongoing. So if you have any more um, encounters you'd like to share, we hope to hear from you again. Our next encounter is shared by Patricia, who lives in Oregon. And I conversed with Patricia over Messenger, and she seems like a really good lady, and she seems very honest. So I'm excited to share her experience with you guys. She writes, Hi, it's Patricia from Oregon. I'll try to get the years right. It's been a long time on a few of them. Growing up in Southern Oregon, shortly out of high school in 1979, on a backpacking trip with my friend Leanne in a very remote wilderness, we had backpacked about 10 miles that day. After we had dinner relaxing by a small fire, the scream started. Nothing like we have ever heard before or have heard since. It was terrifying. We sat back to back all night. We had not seen any people the whole day. We continued on our journey two more nights without incident. In about 2003, remote but accessible by 4x4 vehicle, myself, my friend Carol, and her pit bull Zeus were camping. When we first got there, Carol smelled something bad. I did not. That evening, Zeus would run off for short periods and return frequently. Until this time, he wanted in the tent, tail between legs, and would not come back out. Carol goes to bed. I have a nice fire. Then I smell something, as acrid as a skunk, something dead and wet dog. Then the howling and hooting started. They were not human, too much lung power, too deep in tone. We were down in the canyon by the river. There were at least three on different mountain tops above us. Carol supposedly slept through it, but would not speak of it the next morning, and she wanted to go. She never would speak about it either. So that's all Patricia's sharing with us right now, but I know she has a lot more going on, and she's probably going to share that with us at a later date. So thank you, Patricia and we hope to hear from you again too. Our next encounter comes from a viewer named Annalise and she writes, Good morning Angie. Thank you so much for opening up your channel for your viewers to share their personal experiences with Bigfoot. I would think that hearing the encounters will help facilitate a tighter knit community. Also, I want to thank you for all you and your husband do to share your experiences. This is so truly appreciated. I would love to see awareness raised to their existence, but I am also afraid of them being hunted. A double-edged sword for sure. So with that said, this is my story. I was 19 years old when this happened. I am 53 now and it is as clear to me as if it was yesterday. I really loved to go fishing, camping, and simply being in nature. I had decided to go camping at a remote camping spot for the weekend. You could not drive to that camping spot. You had to hike everything uphill to it. I was super excited for the challenge of getting tent, accessories, and water. I knew it was going to be hard work. I got up early Friday and gathered up all my gear. 
planning my meals and fishing gear. I drove to the camp and hiked up. I got camp set up around 6 p.m. that evening. I had dinner, watched the stars, and slept. I got up early Saturday to go fishing. I really enjoyed the early morning sun in the water. I caught a few fish but had no intention in keeping any so I threw them back. I had lunch and set off on a hike. After my hike I got the fire started and made dinner. The woods had been pretty quiet except for some birds which wasn't abnormal given how high up I was. After dinner I was hanging out watching the stars and simply being happy to be alive. It had gotten quite dark, and it was a wonderfully warm, gentle night. I heard over my right shoulder the sound of a great horned owl. However, it wasn't like one I had ever heard before. It raised the hairs on the back of my neck and made my heart gallop in my chest. I thought, no wonder rabbits become afraid when they hear that. But I don't know why I was truly rattled. I had heard owls plenty of times, so why now? Confused, I heard bipedal steps, and I knew I wasn't alone. My flight-or-fight instincts kicked into high gear, but really, I had nowhere to run to, and I had no weapons, save for my fishing rod. My thought was to just glance out of the corner of my eye and pretend I'm oblivious to what is standing there. So I glanced, and there stood something I had never seen never knew about and did not know how to handle. Seven to eight feet tall, black hair, leathery face and hands. At first I thought, mountain man? Whatever could this be? My thoughts were racing faster than my heart and I was trying to ascertain if I was in danger. I was very young and I had never even heard of Bigfoot, so I was completely flamoxed. Well, in times of stress, times when I don't want to face a yucky project, or simply because I'm happy, I will sing. Now mind you, I am not necessarily the most in tune, but what I lack in tonal value, I sure make up with enthusiasm, lol. So I broke out singing Peter Gabriel, Salisbury Hill. I mean really building it out, while still pretending to ignore what's obviously there. I glanced again, a sideways glance, and he was swaying to the song. I almost forgot the lines as astounded as I was to this, but somehow managed to continue singing. I finished the song and glanced sideways again, just in time to see him melt away into the darkness. I clearly remember how quiet such a big person was. I quickly stoked the fire and ran to the bushes on my left as I truly thought I was going to have to change my pants. <laughs> I'm sorry, that got me laughing. But she continues. I got done and climbed into my tent, shaking and trying to figure out what was that. Have I gone crazy and imagined it? Sleep was very thin that night, and the minute day broke, I packed up and left. I drove back to town and went straight to the local library. No cell phones nor computers for me then, and I did some research. That's when I learned I had an encounter with a Bigfoot. I wasn't scared anymore, but deeply regretful to this day that I had not said anything and had not known more. Still, I am grateful for that memory and how magical and one in a gazillion that encounter was. I cherish that memory. Thank you for letting me share. I have not shared this with many as I consider it pretty sacred. I don't care if anyone thinks I'm crazy. I just want to share it with those who can appreciate the depth of such magic. Peace, love, and light, Annalise. Annalise, thank you. That was magnificent. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed that. And I'm sure my viewers did too. If you have anything else you want to share with us, let us know. We would really enjoy hearing it. So that was our first three encounters shared by my viewers. 
Thank you, Bill, Patricia, and Annalise. I really, really enjoyed this, and I look forward to doing more. And I would like to remind anyone listening that if you have an encounter that you would like to share, send me an email at snowwhitebigfoot at aol.com.